Today in this video we're going to be making some graphene. In a future video we'll be using this to make supercapacitors. All the materials you're going to need are going to be graphite foil, hydrochloric acid, ferrous sulfate, deionized water, a 9 to 12 volt power supply, and an ultrasonic cleaner. First what you're going to want to do is you want to get your graphite foil and you're going to want to cut it. My graphite foil is pretty thick but you can use any thickness that you want. Go ahead and cut it up. You can use any size you want. Next we're going to need some deionized water, a nice jar to put our water in, and then we're going to need a nice big container to throw our ferrous sulfate solution in. I just used a gallon milk container and cut the top off of it. Next we're going to go ahead and pour about 24 ounces of deionized water in our jar here. And then we'll add about 8 more after that just to make about a liter because we're going to be using 15 grams of ferrous sulfate per liter of solution. I'm going to go ahead and pour my other 8 ounces in. The measurements here don't have to be exact, just know that you pretty much need generally a liter. Next we're going to go ahead and get our ferrous sulfate. To measure out everything, I'm just going to be using a tablespoon. That's about 15 milliliters generally. Um, if you want to be more exact, you're more than welcome to use a scale. We're just going to go ahead and pour our ferrous sulfate into the spoon, and then we'll go ahead and mix it into our solution. Again, this is about 15 grams, give or take. I can see I spilled a little bit there. Um, go ahead and mix everything and make sure you mix it until everything's dissolved. At this point I didn't think I had enough in the container so what I did is I mixed up another liter of solution and another 15 milliliters of ferrous sulfate. I wanted the electrodes to get completely covered in the solution. Go ahead and pour my other 24 ounces there. along with the other 8 ounces. We'll go ahead and get that in the container. Go ahead and grab your graphite electrodes and your 9 to 12 volt power supply. This is just a regular 9 to 12 volt power supply. I cut the ends off and I just threw some alligator clips on the exposed wires. Next, we're going to go ahead and put our alligator clips on each piece of graphite foil. I'm using a pair of clips to secure everything to the container, but if I were you, I would recommend not doing it this way because it might fall in. What I would recommend you do is I would recommend just bending the top of the graphite foil and letting it hang off the top. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure our wires aren't touching so we don't start a short. And we're just going to plug everything in. Now what you're going to be seeing is you're going to be seeing some graphite nano platelets that will be forming at the top of the liquid. You can see there's a little bit of foaming and fuming. And those little black specks are graphite nanoparticles. This took about 12 hours to complete, but whenever you come back, you should see a bunch of black stuff at the bottom. I unplugged everything and removed the electrodes. When you pull out your graphite electrodes, you'll notice that there's one piece that has rust on it. This means that the graphene we've produced is contaminated with rust and we'll have to remove that via diluted hydrochloric acid. 
As you can also see, the other electrode is completely eaten away. As you can see here, I've gotten a flower vase, a funnel, and a coffee filter. What we're going to do is we're going to pour our solution into the coffee filter and filter out our graphite nanoplatelets. The graphite nanoplatelets at this point are large enough in size to where the coffee filter will actually catch it. We're going to go ahead and let everything filter through. And once everything filters through, you should be left with a coffee filter with a jet black substance on top. This is our graphite nanoparticles. Now to process even further to remove the rust, we're going to be using hydrochloric acid. I have some concentrated hydrochloric acid here. We're going to be diluting it to roughly 10% concentration. So next I'm going to pour some concentrated hydrochloric acid into a squeeze bottle. I only filled up the bottom generally, which will be about a 10% solution, but like I said, none of this generally has to be exact. And then I pour deionized water until I fill it all the way to the top. And then we'll shake it to make sure everything's mixed well. Now what you want to do is you want to take your diluted hydrochloric acid solution and just squirt it on top of the graphite. You're going to want to use the entire container until everything goes clear. As you can see, everything is going brown due to the rust being dissolved into the diluted hydrochloric acid. You want to do this again until you finish using up the entire bottle. As you can see at this moment, I'm going to test the acidity. Everything is pretty acidic at the moment, obviously, for, due to the hydrochloric acid. As you can see, everything is finally starting to run clear. And after everything runs clear, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get some deionized water, put it in your squeeze bottle, and go ahead and use that whole bottle. Once the entire bottle is used, you want to check the acidity of the solution. You want the acidity to be about a 6 or a 7, so basically neutral. Once you remove all the rust and the excess acid, we're going to take the coffee filter and we're going to put it on top of a couple more coffee filters to help the solution dry. As you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and put it on a couple other coffee filters. This will help the drying process. Once everything dried, I went ahead and transferred it into a beaker. And it's not quite graphene yet, we're going to have to use our ultrasonic cleaner to break up the particles even more. What we're going to want to do is we're going to add some ice. You don't want the ultrasonic cleaner to get hot because if it does, it will wind up turning your graphene back into graphite and all that work would have been for nothing. We're going to go ahead and take our squeeze bottle with some clean deionized water and we're going to put it into the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm going to go ahead and add a little tap water to the ultrasonic cleaner and go ahead and make our ice bath. Then I'll go ahead and transfer the graphite nanoplatelets into the container. You're going to want to give everything a good mix because these particles uh, don't mix too well either way and you want to break them up. We're going to go ahead and add it into our ultrasonic cleaner and start the ultrasonication process. We're going to want to do this for about 30 minutes and periodically you do want to pick up the container and shake it to break up the particles. After about 30 minutes to an hour, we should have a graphene solution. This can be added to a binder to create a graphene ink, or you can centrifuge it like I have here and let it dry and have some freestanding graphene. I'd like to thank you guys for watching and don't forget to ring that bell and please rate, comment, and subscribe for more science videos.